you know, I'm just going to hold it. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. More? Okay, uh, good evening, everybody. Go on, you can talk to me. It's not one of those. Go on, good evening. Good evening. There we go, there we go. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you. I know it's uh, uh, an evening. You all have precious time. You don't necessarily want to give it to all of the different sports you're involved in, all the extracurricular activities you're involved in, but I do appreciate you being here. I think it's important with a lot of the changes that have occurred that you get the information directly from us uh, at the club. Uh, we've got a lot of things to cover. The good news is we've got a lot of door prizes. You might all actually leave with something based on the, the sheer volume. Uh, yes, and thank you, Lan, for, for the, the efforts there. So give her a round of applause for the most of them. Yeah. What I want to say when we go through this, I've done a couple of presentations. I've done something with the treble A's already. And a, usually when I do this, there's a lot of frowning and not a lot of Colgate smiles. Just a lot of people that are, look angry, all right? Don't be angry. It's a soccer game, okay? Smile, relax, try and enjoy what we're going to tell you. Try and trust what we're going to tell you. Let your guard down. Be vulnerable, okay? It is a new chapter. It is a nu it, we are going in a direction that I'm quite excited about, and I'm happy to share it with you. So this is how we're going to do it. Straight away, before I let Mark come on, we're going to do a door prize because we've just got so many of them, okay? So the first one, Pizza Co. Kieran's got the box at the back. Kieran, can you give it to someone so you don't cheat? First door prize. 0477-9475. Do it again. Slow down. Zero. Hey, there we go. We have a winner. Do you like pizza? Yeah. Good. Enjoy. Okay, here's our agenda. I'd like to uh, welcome Mark McFarlane to obviously speak to you guys. So give him a round of applause as he introduces. Can you hear me all right at the back? Yeah. If you want to talk lower, I can too, so that the first row can just hear me. So. First thing I say here we are at SNU, you're in an electric theater. Take a look at your right. The person on your right, take a person, the, take a look at the person on your left. One of you will not be here at the end of the semester. <laughs> All right. Um, I know it's bad dad jokes. My, my, my kids wouldn't even show up tonight because they, it would be awkward and cringy. Uh, but the evening isn't awkward and cringy. There's been times where we've got together as a community where it has not been very fun. And one of the words that kept creeping up in my mind as I contemplated my involvement with Halifax City Soccer Club, of which I've been involved with for over 15 years, uh, is change. That every year there's been some change. Some very good changes, some very awful changes, but change has been a consistent theme. And it was one of the words that kept creeping up in my mind as I just put together my thoughts for this evening. Um, I'm hoping that we change the narrative. There's always going to be change, as there is in life uh, and otherwise. And it's another C word, and it's not coronavirus. Okay? Um, yeah, so uh, the, the, the C word that I'm referring to is community. Um, and any good community has a shared interest or passion or, or something that links them together. And in this case, and historically, it's been soccer, right? We look at this game, it's a lovely game, it's a, it's a fantastic game to play, and it should be fun. But then there's all these other derivatives that come from the game. Going away to a tournament, acting out, running in the hallways as a, as a U12 player and getting yelled at by your parents to settle down and quiet down. Having pizza at the end of a game, going as, as a group somewhere and enjoying the experience. And there's so much more than the game um, that sometimes we, 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 lose, we lose focus of that, and what's, what's bringing us together, which is so many different things. It's not the score at the end of the day that's really important. It's what, what are we deriving, what, what, what are we getting from being part of a, a, a larger community. Um, we're fortunate enough to 
have a group here tonight. We're live streaming it to a number of different, we're not live streaming it to a <laughs> We were live streaming it. Regardless, you get my point. There's, there's a lot of people, a lot of connections um, as a function of this game that, that, that we love and that we play. Um, we're fortunate tonight to have some folks with Soccer Nova Scotia here with us. They're part of our extended community. Um, I can tell you at one point in time, early in my soccer career related to city, Soccer Nova Scotia was here, and we were here, and there was a big gap in between. And between the two of us, we never really talked, let alone worked together. And I'm pleased to say with some evolution in both parties that we play pretty well in the sandbox together. So much so that we support each other in pursuit of establishing uh, higher standards for our game. Uh, I want to point out too, something that we should really be proud of. I'm not sure if you, if you read the website, but very recently, Halifax City Soccer Club was recognized by the Canadian Soccer Association as one of 13 clubs across the country, and the only club east of Ontario to be recognized as a quality soccer provider. Big deal, so what? That means there's a ton of work behind the scenes to really support the soccer experience of the Okay? You're the single most important part of our club. I'm the president of the board, and there's a couple other board members here, and yeah, I, I, we, we like to think we're a pretty big deal, but at the end of the day, you guys are the most important feature of our club. You're the members that help us grow. You are our community. Um, I'm not going to ramble on it. I, I, I can tell you of all the changes um, that have happened. Tonight is about growth, rebirth, um, club launch for registration. It's looking to the future. And, and I can tell you, and hopefully we're able to share that with you tonight, a lot of the changes that we're excited about. I wouldn't do this if this wasn't fun. Um, and, and I hope that that spreads so that the experience that you get as being part of our community at Halifax City Soccer Club uh, is one that you'll look back on and in the moment be very proud to be part of and excited to be part of the Halifax City Soccer community. So thank you for coming out tonight. And I'll challenge you to do one thing. When we do this next year, let's get a bigger theater. So I need players, I need parents, I need you folks to spread the word that we're doing exciting things here. Get the word out that, hey, we don't care if you've ever played soccer, but do you like having fun? Do you, do you enjoy being around your friends? Um, we've got an experience that we want to share with a, with a big, big community. So as part of your membership, I would challenge you to maybe get the word out for us. That's all I've got for you for now. <laughs> So before I uh, uh, introduce and welcome Brad Lawler, Executive Director of Soccer Nova Scotia to the floor, I do want to extend my gratitude to Mark, the board, just for really allowing us to go in this direction. Um, you know, this, as he's mentioned, there's been a lot of things that have maybe gone in the past. I want us to learn from the past. We can't forget it, but it is the future, okay? And that's what this is all about. And I just want to obviously... Uh, thank Mark for what he's done to this point with me being with the club. So I'm going to hand over to Brad Lawler, who's just going to say a few words from uh, Soccer Nova Scotia. Think of them as a franchise and think of the clubs as a franchisee. 
We have to make sure that those clubs have the support that they need to do business. They're the ones that are dealing with kids. They're the ones that are dealing with coaches. The coaches are selling the product, but we weren't working hard enough with the clubs. So our focus with Soccer Nova Scotia right now, our key focus is working to develop clubs within this province to build clubs up and to support clubs. <coughs> Halifax City is one of the, well, the first in Atlantic Canada to be club licensed as a quality soccer <coughs> provider. Some people may think that's just a term, but what that is is the club is saying that they're putting, that your guys' safety, player safety is number one in every regard of the sport. Your financial safety, your safety on the pitch, your safety with coaches, they're looking after you. So I commend Halifax City for uh, being club licensed so quickly, so great job on that. I know you're here to listen to these guys, so the last thing I want to discuss is it really takes a village, folks, to make this work. Running a provincial sport organization of 22,000 members, running a club of 700 to 1,000 members is not easy. It's not easy. You're dealing with so many parents now, grandparents, brothers, sisters. Everyone has a different opinion on how the club should be run. The organization has staff. They have a board of directors. They have a governance board and an operational staff. And they're going to steer you in a direction, but you're not going to get there unless you're all rowing in the same direction. They need support behind them. They really and truly need something. it. It's not just going to happen. We have the new executive no director. No disrespect, Mike, because he's awesome. But he's not going to come in and fix everything. He's going to do his best, but he's going to need a lot of support as you guys move through this. So I really hope that you guys can help support the staff. Um, the staff are great here. The board, from what I know, have been great. The people I know. I don't want to keep it too early. Um, but there's a really good thing happening here. We're supporting it, and we're hoping you guys are excited about this opportunity. So thanks for having me. Thanks, Brad. Um, we will talk a little bit about club license, and Nino might uh, reference it as well. Uh, again, you're probably going, how on earth, from maybe where we were to where we are now? A lot of it is policies. It's showing a plan of what we're intending to do. We have a plan. Um, a lot of sport organizations don't, okay? Uh, someone who sat in the chair, it's been apparent. So we have a plan. We're going to be held accountable to that plan. That's why you're here. We're sharing some of that plan with you tonight. So it's, I know that we're not necessarily, we've demonstrated that we've done it, but we are demonstrating that we have a plan to get there. And that's what it's about. Um, good colleague of mine, I do want to say that, um, obviously me stepping into a, a new opportunity offers opportunities for others. Um, this guy has a huge potential. Uh, I'm really, really happy to welcome him to the stage. Nino Kovacevic. Thank you. Uh, I'm a permanent work in progress. I guess. Um, thanks for having me. Look, I'm, I'm really, again, um, excited about this. Uh, you hear the word community a lot, um, and that a sport club is in itself a community hub. Right? Uh, a place where we feel safe to, yes, pursue excellence within the sport, but also just be comfortable to be ourselves and get to know people maybe we haven't gotten to know before. Um, as a provincial organization, just to echo what, what Brad's been saying, I don't think we've ever really achieved that. We've run internal programming, specifically looking at player development. We've branched out and, and, and are really focused in affecting coaches. But this is really the first time where we can look at it objectively and go, what is a club, right? So um, credit to, to the leadership in, in Halifax City for, for, for asking that question, for stepping out of the darkness and going, we're committing to certain behaviors um, as Canada Soccer has laid out to, to be a, a club. It means we're safe, it means we're welcoming, accessible, developmentally appropriate and inclusive. Right? So the accountability piece that Mike and Brad have touched about is, is we're going to ask as a provincial body, are you, are you following the policies and procedures in and around that? But as players, if you don't feel safe, if you don't feel included, then that, the accountability is very much on you to ask the same question. Right? Um, so to that, I'm happy that we have a process around that because we talk about player development and personal development but I don't think we've ever looked at it operationally and organizationally and said, what does it actually take at all levels? Provincial, uh, club, board, 
uh, technical staff leadership coach right down to the player. Um, so I'm excited to be on this journey. Uh, it's a commitment. There'll be ups and downs. I'm going to steal a lot of the good practices and share them around the province. And hopefully I'll be able to contribute to the development of, of the club. So thank you uh, for the time. Oh, there we are. Door prize time. Door prize time. Again, I want to, uh, before we do the door prize, just want to thank uh, Citadel um, Physiotherapy for the donation tonight, but also as coming on as sponsor for the U17 AAA boys. Uh, your generosity is really appreciated. I know you've been a part of the club in some capacity as a sponsor, as a donator, and we just, we really value that as well. So thank you for continuing to do that. Well done. And if you have an injury, that's where you go, okay? That's the first plug. Not Mark's, no joking. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Door prize time, let's go. I think we have two, right? Yeah. What, massages, one hour? Yep. One hour massages, two of them. Here we go. Do you want two drops? I want two. The first one, slow down with the number, please, Kieran. Not all as uh, quick as you. Hey, we have a winner! Thank you. Okay, next one. The second one is 0477-9464. 9464. 9464, there we are. Oh, yeah. Got some work to do there. So I'd like you to look at the screen. Um, if you're wondering what I'm holding, it's a microphone. We are going to put this on YouTube because clearly there's a lot of people not here. Um, but I want you to look at the screen. You've probably heard me say this if you've listened to me at the treble A. I can't express how important this is. Yes, it's a soccer game. Yes, you want to be better soccer players. Maybe you want to be a better coach. Maybe you want to be a better board member. Okay. That is what we're committed to, is we simply want to support you as people to be the best versions of yourself through the vehicle of our club, our community. Now, that can be, that can be many things. It's me, it's my staff, it's everyone who's involved or in touch with our club. How can we make you better people? Okay? At the end of the day, a club is just a group of people. We just happen to play football or soccer and love soccer. Can we make you better? That is what we're committing to. Can you hold us accountable to that? It's a big, big statement for us to try and live up to. But I'm, I am, I'm willing to do that with you. And it has to be a community that does that together. Nino actually nearly word for word stole our uh, uh, mission, but I kind of stole it from somewhere else. That's kind of the soccer. Um, but we want you to feel like a sense of belonging. Now, there's people in this room you don't know. I, I, if this place was full, I'd probably do this, but I'm not going to do it now because there's no one here and there's no one there. But I'd ask you to go and introduce yourself to someone you don't know because I want you to feel a part of this club. I want you to get to know people that you don't know. When we call for an event, which I'm going to share with you, we have one on Sunday, I want you to go because you actually want to go and meet people and socialize. We have a problem in the world right now. We don't socialize, we don't get together. We're always on our phones. So we want you to feel like you belong, have a sense of belonging with our club, and that we can provide a safe environment. That's that quality soccer provider. It's fun, it's inclusive, it's accessible, and it's developmentally appropriate. That's how we're gonna do it. And then our values, these came from you. These aren't mine, this is the survey. If you filled out that survey, this is what we got from you. So what do we want to be? We want to be passionate. Now, I am very passionate to the point that actually, my last employer told me it can actually be a negative because I come across as too aggressive because I'm so passionate. But I, I love it. And I'll tell you my story in a moment why I love it. I want everyone to love it. If you're coaching with us, I want you to be passionate. If you're managing a team, I want you to be passionate. 
Langal uh, you're passionate. That's why I want her around. Okay? We want people who are passionate because it's, you want to be around people who are passionate. We want it to be professional. The good news is, and it is a joke, you ring the phone, we will pick up now. Okay? It is a joke, you can laugh. We never used to. <laughs> right? You ring the phone, we will pick it up. We will say hello. You email me, we will email back. Yeah. My wife, I'm, we're on a, uh, I'm learning still, but I, I, I sometimes type straight away and I don't just wait. Um, I might be even doing something. So that might be something where eventually you get an instant reply, but over time I may, it might be a day. Okay? But we do reply. We're going to be professional. We want you to have fun. If it's not fun, why are we doing it? If it's stressful, why are we doing it? It's got to be fun. It's a game. It is a game. Quality. You told us loud and clear you want value for your experience. Now, what you, however you define that value, that's different for each and every one of you. But it has to be quality. So if you're playing recreational soccer purely for social reasons, you just, you don't, you're not as committed, but you want to come out once a week, twice a week, you deserve the same quality as someone else that's getting out two, three, four times a week. Okay? It's all going to be proportional to what you're looking for, but you need quality. And we want to give you that quality. Integrity. Okay? We're not, I'm not going to lie to you. you uh, listen, I'm not necessarily going to get it right every time. I'm, as my last employee again can tell you, I make mistakes. I'll learn. But I will stand in front of you. I will be vulnerable. And I am willing to try and get us to a point where we can meet our vision, mission, and values. Okay? And last but not least, player-centered. We play the game. The player has to come first. Now, I will say, parents, you may come in or ring that phone and I'll pick up, okay? And you might tell me that you know what's best for the player or your child in particular. You may, gen you may genuinely feel what you're saying is accurate. We may disagree. Because our player center needs to be the players of the group, not just your child, okay? We'll have some experience that you may not have. You may have some experience that we may not have. We'd like to have that conversation with you. It's not going to be us telling you. We want to have a conversation, but ultimately, we will make the decision based on the players, a player-centered approach. And I hope you trust us, as people that are standing in front of you, as professionals, that we are doing what's best, based on research, based on, on, on contemporary practices. And sport, the landscape of sport is changing dramatically. The rug is being pulled underneath it right now. You know. We've been, this, this race to the bottom is happening quicker and quicker. This adultification, I call it, of youth sport needs to go away. There's no such thing as an elite eight-year-old. There's no such thing as an elite 11-year-old. And yet we continue to deselect players. So if you're after that, we will have a program where there will be selection. But don't rush it. They're kids only once. You don't need to make them professional um, adults straight away. So we'll have that conversation, and you're, you, we will have the best interest of your child at heart. This is our org chart. On the right, you'll notice that the board of directors, myself, we're not on the top of the tree, high and mighty. We're at the bottom. I won't use any bad language, but the rubbish usually drop, slides to the bottom, and we have to deal with that. Okay. So the players at the top, player-centered. But our org chart is board of directors are responsible to make sure that myself, that I'm doing what I've set out to do from a strategic direction with our vision, mission, and values, and that we are doing our job. My job is then to make sure that my staff are doing their job. Staff are working with coaches and working with players. You'll notice parents are in there. I, I, I've been sat where Nino sat. I've seen how clubs operate. We forget that parents are a major component of this experience and we completely ignore their input and don't share enough information with them. What ends up happening, you're in the stands, you're talking amongst yourselves. No offense, some of you have no scooby-doo what's happening. But you start to make up a, a narrative. You make up a narrative because you have to. No one's telling you anything, so you make it up yourself. And that's where friction starts to occur. That's when what you might... This person here might tell you something, you might think it's true, and all of a sudden it's the truth to you. 
We need to share our information with you. We need to have a conversation. And this is what I told Mark when I came on board. You are a partner. Okay? You are a partner with us. If we treat you as the consumer, we won't get the player-centered thing right. The parent is not the consumer. I understand you pay the check. I understand you'd love it if they paid the bill. But you're a partner with us. Because you have the same goal as we do. We want your child to be the best person they can be. And together as a partner, we can establish that and achieve that. We cannot do that if we simply treat you as the consumer. They're the consumer. The player is the consumer. You're the partner. So I, my relationship will be with you. You will have direct contact with me. We can have conversations. We can disagree. And guess what? We can still be friends. You're not always going to agree with people. And that's fine. We'll move on. But I want you to know I'm vulnerable enough for you to come to me and tell it, and I'm vulnerable enough to sit there and tell you when I'm wrong. But I hope you at the same time are ready to also be vulnerable in case you may have not seen it from the perspective that I share with you. But I am going to be available for you. That's my role. Okay? We've got Kieran Collins. Give him a round of applause. Technical director. <laughs> Kieran comes from uh, a rival club. No, just a neighbor club. <laughs> I'm really happy that Kieran's here, and when I actually took the job, you know, it was a big component to know that I had a staff member here that I knew was competent and was vulnerable enough to want to grow as well. Um, me and Kieran can tell you right now, we don't have all the answers. We're still looking and, and, and trying to be better ourselves in the industry that we work in. But I do know that he wants to be the best he can be. Um, he'll be honest with you that he's not necessarily he's not always going to be right, but I know that he's going to have everything I've shared with you so far right at the forefront of everything he does. And I'm really pleased that he's on board. Underneath that, Kieran's going to manage Marissa and Colin. Give them both a round of applause. <laughs> I, I will say, both of them, the fact that we're in here today is down to the fact that they kept the ship afloat when it was, it was struggling. It was struggling. Okay, it was hard times. But we're here primarily because they kept us here. Marissa's going to look after some special projects for us. There's things that we want to try and do with our club that we know we're not doing a good job. We want to install a, a far better female program within our club. We need more females in our club. We need a better pathway for, for, for youth players into senior football. That's what's one of the tasks that Marissa will be looking at with myself. Okay. Also, helping out and mentoring coaches within our club. Colin has been coaching a lot of teams for us just out of necessity. But again, as we start to evolve, Colin will be working with me, with Marissa, with, um, with Kieran to mentor and support our coaches. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. We've all got vision, missions and values. To speed this up, I'm not going to go through all of them. I was going to let us all tell a little story, but we might be here all night. So I'm going to bin it. Marissa, you can br breathe now. Thank okay, you. okay. Um, but I'm going to tell you a little story about myself. Because at the end of the day, we're people. And in order for us to have a relationship, we've, we've got to understand that we are people. Yeah, I'm a coach, but I'm also a person. I have good days, okay? I have bad days. Kieran has good days. Colin, Marissa have good days, bad days. Guess what? We also feel as well, like you. So when you're angry, yeah, we get sad when you're angry, okay? We're people. And I think it's important when, when friction comes or you feel like there's something you need to say, we just have to remember we're a community and we're all trying to do the, the best we can, all right, based on what we know and our experiences to date. Now, with me... Why am I sat in front of you? This is a little story about me. Why am I so passionate? Why do I get told that I'm, you know, I don't listen, I'm too aggressive? The reason is, I'm stood in front of you today as a family man because of this game. I met my wife and my two beautiful daughters are down to kicking a soccer ball. So everyone goes, what? He must have an agenda. He must want this. He must want that. No, there's no agenda. I just love what it did for me. And that's what I want to give back to you. And the great thing about this is, over time, 10 years now, this, I do consider this home. I mean, there's so many times people have said, you want to go to Canada soccer, you want to go to the Whitecaps. The Whitecaps are only in Nova Scotia because you want to go to the Whitecaps. Those job opportunities have been, they've gone. They've been turned down. The reason why I'm sat in front of you today with Halifax City Soccer, one, I can see the potential, but two, as a family man, this was a better fit for me. And that's why I'm here. Okay? That's why I'm here. 
He's got to travel the whole province. He hasn't got kids yet. He's got to do it now. I've done it. My race is run. It's his race now. And that's what I'm about. I'm about trying to install people to get the same experience I had and be curious and passionate about the sport that they play. Okay? Now, one of the, the other passions that I have is players. I love working with players, but I'm equally thrilled to work with the coaches, the adults. And that's something that I'm so passionate about. And coaches, particularly our coaches, we've heard your surveys. I know you've been starved of any support. That is going to change so that we can actually be sustainable as a club. So that's me. That's what I'm about. Okay? The game, I owe, I owe everything. Absolutely everything. This is, if it ever moves. Was I talking that long? Did the battery die? I think if you shake it one more time. <laughs> it worked. That's Kieran. I'm not going to let him speak. But please, go and, go and chat with him at the end. Yeah. 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 Go and chat with him. Okay. Take it in. That's Marissa. It's Colin. Great smile, Colin. <laughs> All got purpose, all got their own values, all in it for the right reasons. Door price time. <laughs> now, under the age of 21, if you win, you must pass it to your parent. You must pass it to your parent. Two. Two. And what is it? A gift card. I was going to say a pint in here. Here we go. Jimmy, you're not taking this if you win. 0477 <laughs> Four, five, one. Anyone? Hey! If somebody, uh, if you want to swap it with someone who ever wins near you, you might want pizza. Next one. Uh, I think it's the last three digits, yeah. So four, four, zero. Four, four, zero. Last four, three four, digits zero. in you. Last three digits. Hey! Well done. Round of applause. Come on. Okay, we have, we have a vision, we have a mission, we have vows, but we need underpinning principles that guide us because, you know, sometimes you need other things to navigate you. This is the first one. It's the one currency that we all have. No one has more of it. Nobody. Okay, we all come from different backgrounds, we all have different bank account sizes, but with this, we have the same. And we need to respect what this is. So when you come into one of our sessions, if you come to a coaching workshop, if there's something like a, this tonight, we want to respect your time. We want it to be of value, and we don't really want to waste a minute. Now granted, we wasted 15 because people kept coming in late. <laughs> we want to change that. We want to be deliberate about the time that we have with you. Because we don't get a lot. Okay? If we're going to try and make you the better soccer players we can, twice a week's not a lot. Three times a week. It's not a lot. We need to be deliberate about every minute we spend with you. And again, for us now as staff, if we're mentoring our coaches, we're able to take an objective lens and ask ourselves, are we being deliberate? Are our coaches who are the face of our club being deliberate with the time that we are being given with you? Okay? And I'll give you some examples. Are you taking too long to transition from one block to the next block? We can fix that through session design. You've all seen it. You've got 50 million cones on the field, and then the second session needs 50 million cones in different areas. You've just wasted 15 minutes. We don't need to do that. So we can be more deliberate about what we're doing. So this is something that is extremely important to me. Number two, better coaches, better players. It's the only way you're going to improve. If, if your coaches 
are not going to provide you the environment, the coaching, the detail that's required, you're not going to improve as a player. So what usually happens in soccer clubs is a TD at times, sometimes even gets, puts themselves and, and coaches a team, which means they only really work with 18 players. And that means no one else gets really much access to them. That's a waste of money, your money. That's not happening. You will, not, you, you will start to see, because obviously we're in a stage of evolution, but you will not see Kieran coaching a team. He will not take a team. He will basically be available to coach coaches of many teams because our reach will become bigger. We're, we're, we are unfortunately, based on standards, not able to do that with all our staff, but we are aiming to do that. Marissa will have to take a team this year, but Colin will not. Okay. We want our coaches to be better. We need to find that sweet spot because everyone's different, coaches as well. So we might have Bill, who's got lots of experience, doesn't necessarily need a session plan, but we might have, I don't know, Nino, who's brand new and needs more. We're going to have to blend how we support and mentor each coach differently. But we are going to support you. We aren't going to hand you a bag of balls and say, good luck, see you in three months. Because that's why we don't have coaches anymore. Because people are fed up and miserable. Okay? We're going to mentor you because we need to support you so you can support our players. As many as possible, as long as possible, in the best environment possible. This is coming back to my point I said earlier. The adultification of youth sport must stop. There's a reason why I'm, not going to lie, stressed out about what teams we're going to go to field this summer. Because we have deselected kids too early. The pool has got too small. If we keep the pool as big as possible for as long as possible, we're not going to have this problem anymore. Now, Canada Soccer have come up with ideas. Soccer Nova Scotia have endorsed that. And obviously, the clubs are endorsing that to try and change that. But that takes the mentality of you as parents to change too. Research is showing us, clear as day, you can't really, um, you can't ever really figure out what's going to happen to a, the potential of a player until they've gone through puberty. So why are we trying to say you're going to be an elite 10-year-old? You're in the high-performance 11-year-old. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So let's keep the pool as big as possible. Let's keep as many players playing for as long as possible. And hopefully, we will have teams at every level when it's the right time to separate. Now, that's tough. That takes a complete paradigm shift because that is something that we don't do. We want it earlier, and it's getting earlier and earlier and earlier. And the problem we're going to run into with our sport is hockey ain't going to change. Basketball ain't going to change. So we need to set the example. We need to be the light that leads the way. Because more and more kids are quitting. They're quitting. You as parents struggle to socialize with your friends when your child doesn't make the team at 8 and 9 and 10. You've just been removed from your peer group. Who you socialize with. And what do we do? Well, I'll take them to this club then. They'll put them on the team. And there's no loyalty, there's no, there's, and no should they be at this point if that's the way we're behaving, but there's no community. We have to change that. And the only way we're going to change it is you in the room and you spread this message. The cream will rise to the top when it's the appropriate time. It will. Of course it will. But I can tell you the characteristics of a, a, a top quality nine-year-old are completely different from an 18-year-old. Completely different. Just put that in the back of your mind. We're going to hold coaches accountable. There is absolutely no excuse to register a player, put them on our club, take your hard-earned money, and then sit on the bench. Wrong. Now, if the sport was free, different ballgame. Like it is in, in Europe at times. It's very, very affordable. Maybe it's a different ball game, but here you're paying for this. You need a service. Your minimum requirement is 40%. Why is it not 50? Because no one wants to be doing this and making sure it's right on the mark. It gives you a bit of wiggle room. Now, this is an absolute either. So if you're in a competitive team, say like a double A team, and you're just not showing up ever, and you just turn to games, you're not really holding your end of the bargain. But if you're turning up, you know what? Yeah, you can go on vacation. As long as you communicate that, 
then you'll get what you're owed. So there is obviously a, a, a gray area there. It's not absolute. But if you're holding your end of the bargain, you should get at least your playing time. How are you going to be a better version of yourselves by sitting on the bench? You're not. As we move forward, you will not see coaches hollering and screaming at players when they're playing the game. That quote was written by a child. I thought, oh my God, and I captured it and I stole it. Children are super smart. Teenagers, they might not seem it, but you are smart. Okay? If you are screaming and hollering while they're playing the game, that's not enjoyable. That's just going to stress you out. Okay? They don't even, you actually don't even hear what it is they're actually saying. You just hear loud, angry noises. Same for you as parents. They don't hear you. They hear that you're angry, but they don't know what you're saying. And what for me it does, if I see a coach do that, you're basically advertising to everyone who's watching that you didn't coach them during the week. Because if you're having to scream and shout at them, then they don't know what they're doing. You've not coached. So we don't want that. Now, I think a really positive good time of this club was when Ken was here. Some of you have been through that. That was a, that was a standard of Ken. There was no shouting when the players were playing. We want to bring that back. Now, that isn't an absolute, again, that you just completely sit back and it's cigar time, because it's not. You still need to ask the players questions. You still need to engage them cognitively. Okay? You can still go, Marissa, what do you think you can do if X, Y, Z? That's not screaming at them. That's probing them. So that's still coaching. But if you're getting screamed at, that's not fun. Players, would you agree? Is it fun when people are screaming at you? No, it's awful. So we ain't going to do it. Yeah. Door price time! <laughs> I'm, this is the best part, right? <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> Three! Oh, they smell really good. <laughs> Hey. Nine, four, nine, four. Hey, that's me. Hey. I'll take your ticket. Yeah. Nine, four, eight, three. Nine, four, eight, three. Winner, winner. Hey. Yay. Coming back, feed it on. Oh, sorry. Okay, before I pass over to Kieran, just have a look. There's nothing, it's funny, I think sometimes the purest thing in soccer is the simplicity that it can be, and yet we confuse, complicate everything because it just, we want to sound intelligent. At the end of the day, you're kicking a ball down the field. This is going to be, and Kieran's going to take you just through it a little bit, what we're about. That's the game. Search, create, exploit gaps and spaces. That's the game. Where's the gap that you want to put the ball? Where is it? Players, where's the gap? The net. There's two posts, there's a gap. Put it in. Now, to get to the goal, you've got to go through gaps all the way to get there. A gap can also be a player and the throwing line. It's still a gap, but that's the game. So we're going to start to use common language. It's things that we can talk to you about. And it's already started. We've seen it. In the, in the short period we've had with you, the language from coaches is starting to change, and the language from the players and understanding is starting to change because we have a community set of terms that we can all reference to. But that's going to, this is going to be our game model. And then the detail that goes into this, based on your level, based on your understanding, will be quite, quite advanced. And then on the other side, because we all have defending, recognize, reduce, and deny. Kieran, take us through it, mate. Well done. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, so first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for being here tonight. Um, really like to thank Mark for reaching out with me with this opportunity. 
Uh, big reason I'm here today is because Mark did that, so I, I really want to thank you for that. Um, and then not long after I came on board, uh, Mike was then hired, um, which has been really awesome. We've had a relationship in the past working together as well, and uh, working with Mike is great so far because he's been able to give me the kind of freedom uh, to, to kind of grow as a professional as well. So I know that, I, yes, I'm going to make mistakes as well, but I'm able to try things and explore and, and kind of pick apart my idea of the game while also while growing in this environment, so that's been really important to me. Um, the other thing I just want to add is I've been able to meet uh, quite a few of the membership, whether it's players, parents, coaches, board members. Um, and they've made it really easy for my transition into this role. So I want to, to thank you all as well that I've met because uh, we talk about community a lot at this presentation. I know Nino's referenced it, Brad, Mike, Mark. Um, and it means a lot to me and I've, I've really felt a part of the community already, um, which I can't always say has happened in the past. So I, I want to thank you for that as we, we get into this. Uh, so, so Mike's kind of touched on it. Um, this is kind of our idea of the game, how we're going to uh, implement to go forward. Uh, it, it can seem really simple, but it can also be very complex. So if you take it in, search, create, exploit gaps in possession, recognize, reduce, and deny out, it seems very simple, but throughout the programming and the age and the stage, we're really able to kind of delve into it and go from simple to complex, complex, simple, depending on what the need is. Uh, so the way that I've kind of, Mike's asked me to speak on the technical direction of the club, um, I could talk about the game for six, seven, eight hours straight, so I'll try and be, uh, keep on task and not take too much of the time, but the way I really broke it down is looking at, moving forward, player development, coach development, and program development. Um, and those are kind of the three main focuses when we look moving forward. Uh, the first thing is create an identity for this club. Now. Mike just kind of referenced when Kenny Ward was here. Uh, when I was growing up, Kenny was the technical director of the club. I'm actually originally from the Valley. So if you, uh, apples and agriculture, we're all good. Um, but uh, one of the things that kind of coming from that kind of outside perception is Halifax City always had this kind of swagger about them, this kind of identity as the, you know, the club within the heart of the city. And, and I think Kenny did a really good job when he was here creating that identity, and I, somewhere along the way, I think it's kind of been lost, I think not through anyone's fault, but it's just kind of been uh, wavering a bit. So hopefully one of the things we can bring back is, is that club identity for this. Because, um, I mean, it, it, everybody knew about the hoops, everybody knew about the green. Uh, it, it was a really, really cool thing to watch from the outside. And it, to be a part of it now is fantastic. Um, so what that identity looks like, the idea of the game is just a part of it. Uh, we're going to have, I mean, a, a technical structure, a lot of details that we'll go into with the players and the coaches, but most importantly, it's, it's going to be the way we try and play the game. Um, and it's going to be from top down, so not just the AAA groups, not just the AA groups, but making sure that our community, our development, our grassroots, our mini programming, it all thrushes together. It's not just separated. So that if players go from one program to another, or one age to another stage, that it all, it all connects. Uh, another big thing is improving the learning environment for players. Um, we want our players to be curious, they are learners. Whether it's physical literacy, whether it's about the game, whether it's learning to interact and be social, whether it's learning uh, how to run and jump. Those are all very important because we're trying to make better people and we're trying to hopefully do that through sport. Um, so that's a really big part of what we're here to do as well. Uh, we want to be able to talk about player-centered, provide individual feedback in and between seasons. So moving into the summer, we're going to be able to hopefully, uh, through the coaches and, and the staff, provide feedback to players. Sometimes it's going to be written in the sense of a form. Sometimes it's just going to be the coach uh, talking to the player within a session. Um, so those are some of the things we're looking for for the summer as well. And, I, and I'm not going to touch on this too much because Mike's going to go over it a bit later, but a clear player pathway. So if players are curious, if parents are curious, if coaches are curious, uh, you know, what is the actual pathway for a player? How do I get from the grassroots program into a development program? How do I get from a AAA program into an Excel program like the Whitecaps or Rex? Right? So that's something we're going to kind of outline so that uh, people are just aware. And so I've thrown some examples up there. Here's kind of our visual representation of our game model. Uh, it's a nice big circle. Mike's done a great job on jazzing it up. He does a good job of that stuff. Um, Thanks, but again, it can look very complex, but at times there's layers that are very simple. If you look at the outer ring, Essentially all that is, I'm not going to read it out, but it's just technical competencies of players. So it could be 1v1, passing, shooting, stuff like that. Um, and then if you go all the way back in the middle, again, it's our idea of the game, which is search, creating, exploring. And then as you go through the layers, uh, it becomes more complex based on probably what age and stage or program you're in. 
Uh, and so by doing that, we hope that we'll be able to connect the kids. So the, the kids that are six, seven, eight now that are hearing this search, create, exploit, that just becomes a part of their language that is involved in software so that when they're 14, 15, that they've got a really good handle on this. And it's going to take time, uh, but this is kind of, this is what we're here to hopefully implement. Uh, things like having an organization for the level side, so again, technical structure, understanding how that affects the players, uh, and then making sure that we link it through so that not just the 11 aside, so it links to the 9 aside and the 7 aside. So as they come through, it all kind of connects together from 5 to 5, 77, 99, 11 be 11. Uh, doing things like creating positional profiles. So if players are going, well, I have this kind of skill set, or the coach has told me that I'm really good at doing this or this, where do I fall in on the field? Uh, kind of streamlining that within the club so that it becomes more consistent through the groups. So it's not just, I had this coach this season and he played against center back and now I have this coach this season and he's playing against striker because that can be very confusing as well. And it's not to say that they don't have the ability to play multiple positions, but as we get closer to the high end or the performance stream or the Excel stream, we do start to look at where players play uh, positionally, essentially, to provide that support for them. The next step is uh, coach development. So this is a, a really key part of my job because as Mike said, I, I'm not gonna be around coaching every single team. I can't do it. I wish I could, but I can't. So uh, trying to help affect our coaches to the best of my ability so that we're all on the same page. We're trying to deliver the same message uh, and reach as many of the players as we can. And so for that, providing education on the club identity, curriculum, uh, training plan, guidelines, stuff like that, rolling that out with the coaches, one, so that we're all on the same page, but two, to get feedback so that I can grow that. I don't want it to be just me uh, handing Phil or Jill a, a, a session plan for the summer and, and saying, okay, do this. I don't want to hear your opinion on it. Just, just do it and trust me. Because that's not how I'm going to grow. That's not how we're going to grow as a club. Okay, so I'm actually, just like Mike, very open to feedback, very open to having conversations. And I, I appreciate that because, again, I am still growing this profession. I am young. There's things I'm going to do wrong but I hope that in turn I can learn from those and, and grow moving forward. Uh, Mike spoke about again, working with different coaches, so having coaches that call and support, having coaches I support, Marissa and Mike, so that we can do our best to kind of maximize the staff we have while providing that same support for our coaches. Um, we want to be able to have the gold standard coach certification and training because it's not fair or safe to have uncertified, untrained coaches dealing with children. So making sure that's a big part of what we do moving forward so that all of our coaches are screened, they have back checks, uh, certified in what they need to be, trained in what they need to be so that we can provide the best experience for the child. Uh, and again, developing a clear coach pathway. So if we do have a coach that comes in that's keen, that's maybe out of university or maybe looking to get into the game, uh, they can understand, okay, how do they get to where they want to be? Do they want to be a coach with younger players who then work on developing in the grassroots? Do they want to get to the AAA? Do they want to try and get to Excel? Whatever they want to be able to support those coaches so when they come in they don't feel like, all right, you're young, you're new, we're just going to shaft you and throw you in the corner and do the grassroots. Because that's not good. That's how we lose coaches as well. So trying to not only increase our membership through players, but also hopefully volunteers and coaches. So again, just some examples of some of the things we're working on. So technical competencies within the age group, so coaches can understand these are the things we're looking for. Uh, and one of the big things for me, and I'll just touch on here, is if you look at the U7 and U9, passing does not have a big black check, because we want them to be masters of the ball. And too many times we hear, you, sometimes you hear coaches, sometimes you hear parents, but you see a, an eight-year-old dribbling with the ball, and they go, wow, he's selfish, he doesn't pass. We, we want that. We want them to be dribbling as much as possible, and when we get to the older ages, then they'll learn to share. But those kids in, in, in the, the U7, U8, U9, they're very, they're selfish because they think about themselves as an individual. So we want them to explore that, and then when they're ready to share, then they can learn to pass. Okay, so those, that's just one of the things with the, the technical competencies. Uh, helping the intervention methods uh, within the session, so it's not always just me shouting at the players, this is what I want to do, or saying, uh, you need to do this, this, and this. And maybe it's, all right, Padre, what did you do there? Okay, great, what was another solution? And then you can walk through it. All right, or, or maybe it's, uh, I actually don't even ask a question, I say, show me what you would do. All right, and Padre gets the ball and he dribbles through three players, fantastic. So just exploring the different methods for our coaches to actually use when they, when they deliver sessions. Uh, helping them with their session design. So what do sessions look like? What are the different styles to, to kind of put those sessions in? 
Um, so the example here is the progressive session design, which is probably used with older players. The last one is going to be program development. So this is a big thing as well because uh, a lot of times when new staff come in, um, it can feel like, well, the first thing to take care of is the performance because it's really, so it's, it's a low number, low membership, it's really easy to do. We recognize that there is a massive, massive gap right now in grassroots software. Um, I mean, luckily we were able to have Nino you know, help us and Mike go through for the club licensing and become that first uh, club license club in Canada, but we do recognize that's a gap. So a, 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 like a major thing for us right now is becoming a leader in grassroots soccer in Atlanta, Canada, because we believe we can provide that experience. Um, if we don't build the base, we won't have the players for those top programs anyways. So the more players we can keep in the game, the more kids we can keep active, healthy lifestyles, the more kids we can give a positive experience, the, the better we will at doing the rest of it. But if we can't even do that, then there's not really a whole point in even touching the other ones. So for me, that's a really big thing. It's just, I mean, one of my values and one of my, my missions is just we want players to love the game. And if they don't love the game, they won't continue in it. So providing that positive experience so that they want to continue in whatever capacity they want is really, really important to me. Uh, community again. More community recreational programs targeted at uh, providing that membership and providing that community feel. So we just recently, Colin and I were in some schools to run some uh, gym sessions uh, with, with the kids in there. Fantastic, they loved it, it was great, just go in and have some fun. Uh, be a part of that community. And I think if you notice on our the pamphlets being handed out, or, or some of the social media posts, we use kind of the word family a lot as well. And I think that's a really, really good one because um, a lot of times like, you're honest with your family. And we want you to come in when you have an issue, we want you to come in when you want to say something positive, you have some good feedback. We want you to feel that you can be transparent with us because we're going to be transparent with you. And, and trust is a huge, uh, huge part of this. And so that's a, a massive thing I value. I know Mike values it. I know the rest of the staff values it as well. So we want you to trust us, but we know that we have to show you a reason to do that. And so hopefully moving forward, we do do that. And then lastly, even though we want to focus on the grassroots and move those programs forward, we still want to provide the best experience to our players in the uh, performance programs, so at the AAA level, AA level, uh, and as we get into the development. So we recognize that also there will be a league coming at some point, hopefully the player development league, and we want to set the standard with those teams so that when that does happen, we are able to enter it. Um, if you know any of the Excel programs, there's the Whitecaps on the boys' side and the Rex program on the